have an idea in your mind of something you want and you deserve to get it. So how do you get there? Well, welcome to the Idea Space, a podcast devoted to helping you overcome frustration and make what you want a reality. I'm your host, Jen Liddy, high school teacher turned entrepreneur. Now I'm a business development coach. It's my mission to help women bring their ideas to life and get what they want without feeling guilty, selfish, overwhelmed, or lost. Every week, I share topics, tools, and strategies to help you move toward that thing you want. Create time and energy to do the things you love, get clarity on what you really want and how to get there, and most importantly, stop feeling alone with your challenges. Whether you've wanted to create a better business, job, relationship, hobby, or self, I know there's something more that you want, and it's time you were able to get it with confidence and clarity. Ready to have it? Let's go. All right, welcome to the Idea Space Podcast. I'm your host, Jen Liddy, and welcome to September. This month, I am talking about how to save time, how to get more time, how to create more time. And I've got some unconventional ways that I want to talk about time this month. And in my first podcast this month, I want to talk about why you don't have what you want. And mostly it's because people tell me that they just don't have the time. Life is so busy and we whip around our to-do lists and we act like the longer the list is, the more honorable we are. And I'm sure that you've already heard this statement somewhere, but I'm going to say saying I'm busy is a choice that you made. And that might not be a new insight to you. You may have heard it before, but I want you to think about something that I know is true. It's in the thinking of I'm busy that actually creates overwhelm in our lives. Being busy comes from what's going on in our mind. And you're probably going to say to me, but I have a to-do list a mile long and I have 85 things I need to take care of and I'm running from here to there. And I want you to understand that if you want to change the landscape of what your day looks like, then you have to change what's going on in your mind. If you want to change what your calendar looks like, if you want to change that like feeling, that panicky, graspy, worried and anxious feeling that's going on in your body that comes along with being busy, then, then today's, the, today's pa- podcast is for you because I'm going to teach you what you can do to change your relationship with time, but it requires you to go inside your brain and ask some deep questions. The first question is, what would you do if you weren't so busy? And the second question is, who would you be if you weren't so busy? Now, those are two very different questions, and the latter one is much, much harder to deal with. I used to use the word busy as a badge of honor for honestly most of my life. When I started working on myself a long time ago, the question of who would I be if I weren't busy was really a hard one. It really plagued me. And I didn't know who I would be if I wasn't busy because being busy was part of my identity. It was scary to give up being that person, that busy person, because um being busy made me feel important and it made me feel valuable. And honestly, if I wasn't busy, what would I do and who would I be? I'll tell you, it took me years to unravel that, but starting to unravel that is where the magic begins for you, where you start to like expand time in your life. And if you are somebody who runs from thing to thing, it's going to be very hard for you right now to believe what I have to share with you. So I understand that this is a hard concept to deal with, but I want you to know you're not the only one who struggles with this. I know I'm not the only one who struggles with this. I have conversations with women all the time who tell me that they they desperately need business coaching. And then we talk about my program and they're like, oh my God, that's everything I want. I know this is exactly what I need. And then they go, but they don't have time to do the work. And that's a big story that we have sometimes. Like we really want something, but we don't have time, right? Like I really want to learn how to cook vegan, but I just don't have the time to do it. Or I really want to lose weight and get in shape, but I don't have the time. I really want to learn how to ride a unicycle, but I don't have the time. Like we do this to ourselves all the time. Now I am not here to argue or convince you of anything. 
but I'm going to share with you that 100% of my clients wind up having more time back into their schedule when we work together because the very first thing I teach them is time mastery, which is what I want to share with you today. Time mastery has very little to do with lists or programs or systems. And it's certainly not magical, but once you master it, it feels kind of magical. Uh, Time mastery has completely to do with awareness. Time mastery has to do with mindset. And it's really hard for people to buy into this because even when people finally like are like, fine, I believe you, I'll hire you, let's work together, they resist the beginning parts of this work. Why do they resist? Because they have a very deep-seated belief that if they aren't busy, they aren't worthy. And I want to I want to share with you a story from my childhood because I have deeply, deeply seated beliefs about being busy equals being valuable. So when I was a kid in our family, the more work you did kind of puts you higher up on the food chain in the family. Like there were four kids, two parents, a dog, and many, many guinea pigs because the guinea pigs kept dying. Uh, And we were all living in this very small house. There was plenty of work for us to do. And anybody who rested or didn't do their job, they were like kind of, they were lazy. You know, they kind of got their eye, you know, people rolled their eyes at them. Why don't you help more? Like they were judged. And those who were busy and did the work kind of maintained their honorable mention in the family hierarchy. And stupid me, like I really liked having the validation of you did a good job, good, well done, nicely done. And so I really loved to wait around after my chores to get praise. This inevitably meant that like I didn't do it right or I didn't do it well enough or I needed to do it over, but I would like stand around and wait for my mom to say, good job. Now, But there was never like, now you can go have fun. There was always more work to do. And that made me miserable, but I got a lot of points for being a hard worker. And that's where my value in the world started to be gelled. Now, my sister, on the other hand, she figured this shit out a long time ago. When we were kids, she would like get a chore. She would do her chore kind of half acid and then yell up to my mom, mom, I'm going out to ride my bike. And then she would like leave. And about 30 minutes later, my mom would come down and kind of review her work and kind of the assessment would show that she had done a half-assed job and she was lazy. So of the two of us, guess which one of us had a better childhood? Guess which one of us knows how to have fun? In fact, my sister is known as Fun Tracy. I'm known as the Fun Police. And guess who doesn't struggle with like overworking or an addiction to perfectionism? That's my sister, right? Like she just knew her, her value was not tied up in how quote unquote you know, hard she worked and how well she did for this praise, right? So my addiction to staying busy and seeking validation, it it made me look good in the eyes of the world. I mean, I've always been an achiever. I got good grades and I moved up the food chain at my jobs always quickly. And I always was really liked by my bosses. But the, the shadow side of that is that I have no idea how to enjoy things. I have no idea how to experience pleasure or joy. And honestly, for most of my life, I thought pleasure and joy and fun and adventure were complete bullshit. But my addiction to staying busy and taking care of things and being responsible, like over-responsible, gave me worth. And I've, I've since figured out that there's got to be a better way to feel worthy in the world, to have value in the world. And ironically, the work I do now is I learn how to stop achieving and start enjoying more. And I'm finding that that actually brings me a ton more success and a ton more time in my day. But here's the thing, and maybe you can relate to this. Staying busy was my badge of honor, right? It's what made me feel valuable and useful in the world. And I can see it as far back as elementary school when I would finish a test, instead of pulling out like my Beverly Cleary, no- instead of um, like pulling out my novel to read my Beverly Cleary novels, which I loved, I would start the homework. Like there was no pleasure, like finish this task, go to this task, stay busy, stay busy. And in college, the same thing. I was thinking back to my first jobs where I had some like really shitty jobs where I was like making pizzas, right? And I was in food prep. And once all the, pe- the pizzas were done and they were sent out and it was like nine o'clock at night, but we didn't close till 9.30, there I was like, 
like wiping down the clean counter again because I had to stay busy. And I was just always kind of waiting for my medal and I was always waiting for my boss to notice. And I know that for me, being busy kind of became a sickness. I will say that it went on through my 20s and my 30s and much of my 40s until I realized that being busy was a way to avoid some really deep shit inside my brain. And I was just filling my days and nights with like endless stuff to do. And I'm not going to go into details here, but you can imagine what overworking in your 30s and 40s and your 50s looks like. You already know what overdoing feels like. And the good news is it doesn't have to be this way. You don't have to burn out. You don't have to go down in flames before you make a change. If you can see yourself in what I've shared today, that's a great first step. If you already know, I'm too busy, there's got to be another way. If that's your thought, that's fantastic. So can you admit that? Can you admit to yourself that I'm just too busy? This doesn't have to be this way. I don't want it to be this this way anymore. Because once you do that, there are other steps to get out of the busy. And you're not there yet. Like We're not going to talk about that today. That'll be for a future podcast. But I'm going to share with you all the ways that we keep ourselves too busy. And all I want you to do this week is just notice where you're probably doing something that you don't need to do. You know, like, do you really need to, after the test, do you really need to pick up chapter five and start studying that because that's what you're going to start next week? Like, where are you doing that kind of thing in real life? And I bet if you look back, you'll see that it's been a pattern your whole life and there's nothing to judge yourself about. It's brought you to this moment. But if you're ready to admit in this moment that you no longer want to be too busy, then we can get, we can get started changing that. So if you're dying to get shit done, if you're dying to have more time to make your idea a reality, if you're dying to really implement the ideas that are brimming in your brain, then my online group coaching program is perfect for you. And I'm actually just ramping it up again this fall. And I've got spaces for women. And I'll tell you, it's a really great value because you get a lot of time with me You get a community where there's other women who are like you so that you know that you're not crazy. You're not alone. And I teach you how to first master time. And then like I methodically take you through how to get your goals met. We master your time. We master your mind. And then we start to master your goals. I promise, even if you have not been able to implement in the past, you will be able to implement in this group. So there's tons of support. You don't have to spend a lot of money. And if this sounds interesting to you, I want you to go to my website and check out jenliddy.com forward slash idea space, because it'll tell you all about the program. And through February, I'm sorry, through February, this is not February, this is September. Through September and October, I'm really promoting this group because I know that it's the time of year where women are ready to get back to themselves. So if this sounds good to you, go to the website, And send me a message. I'd love to talk with you about it. And if nothing else, just start noticing where you're too busy and just admit to yourself that I want it to be different because that's where the magic is. I hope this has been helpful to you and I would love to hear from you. Feel free to email me uh, and you can do that at my website, jenliddy.com. I'll see you next week. Bye. Thanks for joining me today. You can access more free tools and video trainings at www dot jenliddy.com slash free sources. That's F-R-E-E sources. If you found this podcast helpful, I'd be so grateful if you subscribed and gave a review. And if you have a friend who'd benefit from today's topic, tool, or strategy, please share the Idea Space podcast with her. That way, together, we can help more women achieve their dreams and take action on their ideas. Isn't it time we all were able to get what we want? Join me next week and remember right now, all you need to do to make your idea a reality is take the very next step you know how to. Bye.